Welcome everybody to uh, Relationship Fun and Games and Fights Clean Sex Dirty TV. We're here with our wonderful guest, Zipporah, and we're here to talk about keeping the sex dirty as it starts. Yes, Zipporah Kingsbury, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And for those of you listening out there, we're going to, uh, in a minute, get into the topic and all of the great tips in the category of how to keep the sex dirty as it starts, right? The seduction. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, we want to introduce you to Zipporah so you can get a sense of who this amazing woman is here and the commitment that she has to individuals and couples uh, living uh, extraordinary lives, both in their, their life themselves, but also in their relationships and then just in connection with their own sensuality and sexuality. So Zipporah, welcome. I just, um, you know, I want to give a little bit of background about you, but then, you know, I'd love to just hear from you, you know, a bit about your journey and how you got to be this uh, leader in this beautiful work that you're doing today. I just love the name of your institute, Soulful Relating. It just almost feels like velvet there, you know? Um, but as everyone can see here on Actually, the slide. We're going to pause for a second. Oh? Uh, Sarah, the, the wrong video is playing in the video player. Yeah, the video player is still playing the tip. Tyler. It's playing the sex dirty as it starts tip. Not? No. Okay. Okay. Maybe it is on my a, screen. It's a browser thing. All right. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. All right. So, Jumpy, back in with Zipporah. Will you go ahead and pull up the screen so they can see her beautiful picture as well? She's got a shorter haircut now, but I love this photo also. Um, and just, you know, she's been out there, her 17 year journey revolutionizing intimacy among individuals and couples. It really helped them to, to see that sexual power. It's actually it's a healing force. You know, out there in the world, sex gets such a bad name and there's so much shame involved in it and what if we could flip that around and actually use that to be a healing force so that we can experience authenticity, connection and pleasure. She may look familiar to you, she looked familiar to me, that was for certain. Um, whether you've seen her on The Bachelor, on, on news shows, because she's just had decades of training not just in relationship but a really, really diverse background from breath work, uh, movement therapy, meditation, conscious communication, tantra, counseling, you know, uh, psycho-spiritual counseling, body science, which I'd never heard that term before, and conscious sexuality. So you can find out more from her uh, about Sephora at SephoraIntimacy.com, but you get to find out more about her right now from her herself. So welcome, Sephora. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me here. I'm really excited to be here. So we were talking a little bit earlier, Zipporah, around your path to the work that you're doing and have been doing for, I believe, the last decade or seven years or so. And uh, what a fascinating story. Um, love to hear a little bit about your path and how you've come to be doing this wonderful work. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the big thing for me is, is noticing my years of really devoting myself to cultivating such a rich relationship to my own body, mind, sexuality, and spirit. And... My life wasn't always like that. About 20 years ago, I was a competitive bodybuilder for five years and owned a very successful business in helping people um, educate themselves about body science, about their own bodies and love of their bodies. But I wasn't so in tune with my own sexuality or my emotions. And I pushed myself so hard in the competition place. It became so compulsive. And my relationships were matching that. Like they weren't meeting me where I wanted to be met. And I was very unsatisfied, and I didn't even know who I was anymore. And I pushed myself so hard that one day I woke up and I could barely walk. I put on about 30 pounds in 48 hours, and I was depressed for about a month, and that was a wake-up call for me because I had never met, felt the immense amount of emotional pain or physical pain that I had felt in that time of my life, and it was just like, this is an opportunity for me to change and every part of myself. So I ended up selling everything I owned and left my cat on my mom's doorstep and picked up and moved to the Swiss Alps where I started my, my own journey with myself, celibate for seven years because relationship-wise and sexuality-wise, I'm like, no one is going to be able to meet me the way I want to be met. They're not going to be able to touch me the way I want to be touched if I don't even know who I am or what I need or what I want anymore. 
and that was the start of studying under many um, teachers and living in different communities but it's my drive to doing what I do with people I want to inspire people to get to know the depth of who they are so their relationships can be brilliant well that's brilliant that's just and I just what I one thing I really love in speaking to you is how you just embody it. You know, sometimes you can just feel people, there's a little bit of a persona, and I just feel you walking the talk. I mean, clearly, when you took seven years of that focus and coming within, and then to come out and have this skill and ability and passion for helping people connect to their passion, um, it's just a very palpable quality uh, speaking with you. So thank you for that. I I had a, a question uh, for you in terms of you said that with your bodybuilding you pushed and pushed and pushed uh, past what was healthy for you leading to this ultimate sort of you know destructing of your body. Um, what did you find in your time off around what inspired you that you know I imagine you still have a very um, you know get it done nature and going after it but it seems like it's more sustainable now so what shifted for you there? One, losing everything I thought was everything. You know, I lost everything back then that, that I was so... Wow, happy. losing everything I thought was anything. Wait, did you say that again? That was awesome. I might not be able to repeat myself. <laughs> losing everything <laughs> I thought was everything, you know? It was yeah. my life. And I think that was the inspiration. The second piece of that was, you know... I really sat with I know I know my purpose like I was really clear and, and it was sitting with that and then I had a choice and I needed to be sustainable for me otherwise I can't do what I'm doing now I mean by definition that is sustainable right the ability to sustain and to continue right absolutely well thank you for sustaining and continuing and taking care of yourself and all the lessons and learning I know we have um, some great tips from you today on our topic. So let's go ahead and um, share with everyone in our audience what uh, the topic is tonight. We have mentioned it, but for those of you who haven't been to our show before, we alternate each week between Fights Clean and Sex Dirty uh, because those are the two topics that people want to know about the most. And when we got married, that's what a friend said to us. All you need to know for a great marriage is keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. Yeah, we had no idea that that would be turning into a whole <laughs> program that we'd be offering, you know, six years down the line. Uh, but it was very good advice. Good advice, and more so than just those two topics in general, but it's what you're going to do and when is really important. Um, so what you do in the middle of a fight is very different than what you're going to do after or well before when one isn't even started and that just you're creating the space. And the same with sexuality and with sex, what we like to call sexy time, super satisfying sexy time. You want to have tips that you can apply exactly for the areas and the time that is most appropriate in your own relationship. So today, Raj, you're going to tell about today's yeah, topic? Yeah, well, so to support that, we've broken our content into this before, as it starts, during, and after. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to keep the sex dirty as it starts. And uh, so uh, these symbols help you locate the content that will best match what you need at any moment, so you don't have to sift through all this other content and really hone in on what you want. And one thing that we just want to let you know if you're here viewing the show live, that if you join us in the Google Hangout, uh, we're going to actually allow you to do that about halfway through at the top of the hour. Uh, and when he says allow you, we don't mean permission that way. I mean, we have to switch something to the technology in the background. <laughs> just so oh, that sounded. Um, but it, we'll, we're we'll let you know. It. We're going to enable, <laughs> empower. We're going to turn it on. We're going to turn the system on so that you can join live. So um, yeah. it becomes interactive. If you're ready to play, we're here to play, right? It's relationship yeah. fun and games. So we'll let you know when the button under the video player goes live. And then uh, but, you may have to refresh your browser. And if you click on that, you can jump in here with us and ask questions uh, of either us or Zipporah, and we'll also give you our cheat sheet uh, for free if you join us live. Yeah, usually you have to pay to play, but in this case, if you play, you get paid, right? You get a couple of bonuses here. If you jump on and you're engaging with uh, live, we'd love to hear your questions. 
Um, as we said, we'll let you know about that. It's about 20 minutes towards the end of the show. And Zipporah has generously offered individual 30-minute sessions. That's a value of $247. And Raj and I also have our cheat sheet for you, which is one page on our top tips on keeping the fights clean, really down to one sentence. So you can just see it in a quick reference. And then on the other side is keeping the sex dirty. So stay tuned for those. Um, because not only will you get those uh, gifts, but you actually get your questions answered personally. Because we know this content is great generally, but there's nothing like getting your specific questions asked. Okay, so we're going to share a little bit of our past season's tips on this area. Yeah, and if you have any, um, you know, if this t particular topic is of you know, real focus to you right now, that actually the seduction part, and this really is a common area, you know, sometimes when people are working on their sexual relationship they can focus on the during, but for a lot of people it's transitioning out of the functional and into the um, fun, we'll call it, <laughs> from functional to fun, right? So if this topic is of interest to you, we would just want to point out that there's a couple places you can look on our website. So you can check out past episodes of our Fights Clean Sex Dirty TV show, and uh, uh, we have here listed the different seasons. We're in our fourth season now, so these are our past episodes. Yep, so you have top tips for tantalizing, timing, tempting, and teasing. That's with Rob Scott and Renee Haeckel. And then season two, we had Set Yourself Up for Sexiness with Brian Franklin and Jennifer Russell. And season one, we had How to Set the Stage for Best Ever Sexy Time with Alex Allman. And let me just tell you, that's the only interview in 28 interviews I wasn't on. But whatever Alex and Raj talked about, Raj and I had the sexiest night, the night after that interview. These interviews are very educational for us as well. <laughs> yeah. so, so you might want to check that one out. You might want to check that one out. <laughs> So we also have our blogs on our website, relationshipfunandgames.com, and you can go to our blogs. We have uh, these two blogs, Booty Before Brecky, and uh, Set and Setting Sex is a Lot Like Tripping. Yes, yes, and uh, again, Raj showed you that logo. Just look for, in this case, it's the Sex Dirty, so it's a heart with the devil horns on it, and uh, so it makes things real easy to find. And you can also, there's a great search function there, because we want you... You know, not to have to go through a whole lot of content. We want you to find just what's going on in your relationship. In fact, we ran into someone recently who came to us and said, I was in the middle of a fight with my husband, and I thought, wait. And I stopped arguing because it was going nowhere, and I went to the website, and I went to Fights Clean During, and I found a tip of what to do to unhook. And I yeah, just, that was awesome. Yeah, when you're in the thick of it, if you can pull out and go get a new tool or a tip, like, that's a ninja <laughs> skill. Way to go. <laughs> so... Uh, the tip that we're going to share uh, today with you in terms of keeping the sex dirty as it starts is called Give Them a Game to Play. So we're going to review this tip with you, and then we're going to dive in deep with Zipporah, and she has a lot of wonderful tips in this area. And so we're excited to, to share ours and also give you some access into what Zipporah has to offer. Yes, so as you know, we're called Relationship Fun and Games, and we like to play games. In fact, when Raj has something, some criticism or some feedback he wants to give me, I've coached him to say, Gabby, I know, let's play a game, because it's much easier for me to jump in and get excited about his happiness when he's not coming from, why do you do that? <laughs> so we don't just play apply the games to our keeping the fights clean, we apply them to keeping the sex dirty too. So this tip is called, give them a game to play. And we're going to give you three examples of a couple of games, but it's not that these games specifically, but just to bring some levity to this, to the seduction, to entice your beloved, to create some anticipation. And uh, of course, we're always going to give you a little action option with some specific steps you can take to take this to the next level. So Raj, you want to take that to the next slide there for them? Yeah, great. And we'll have our moderator, Sarah, post these links into the chat. You may need to refresh your window to, to have the chat uh, update as well. Uh, so you can go ahead and check that out. Okay. Okay, so the most common problem that we hear from couples in relationship to having a spicy, awesome sex life is that things tend to get over time stale, predictable, and boring. We don't want that, right? You want to have some variety, you want to have some enjoyment and some spice. Life is too, da too tough, right? We want to have that respite and that sexiness and that, um, you know, there's partial release and partial sourcing yourself when you're intimate with your beloved. So as I like to say, you know, this kind of sexy time is way too good to give up on. So don't give up on this. It is possible. 
Now there is this you know kind of Herculean hurdle of your time and energy and so um, what we want to give you is some easy and quick ways that you can kind of entice and excite your beloved so that you can keep it fresh and fun and really mix it up. So how do you do that? So this is all about inviting your beloved to play a game. So we have three actual games here and again like Abby mentioned earlier you can, this is just sort of a, a palette to play with. You can create your own games. Um, when we talk to people about this whole notion of games, it's really fun to hear what people come up with. What do you mean a game? <laughs> you know, it's not like, oh, he's playing games with me. We don't mean that way. <laughs> Messing with your mind. No, you know, not calling you back. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being in a relationship and bringing some levity, bringing some positivity to not just your day-to-day -day experiences, but actually to even how you're handling uh, both conflict and um, creating that intimacy and uh, sexiness with each other. Yeah, and this whole concept of bringing a game into your sex life is awesome because often, especially after you've been together for a little while, as Gabby mentioned, things can start to get stale and predictable, and then we'd rather do other things than engage in sex, which is um, not only destructive to your relationship, it's destructive to you personally, just in terms of your full self-expression as a person. And this concept of bringing some games to it, they spice it up again. It, it gives you something to look forward to. Yeah, nobody at the end of the night when they turn the TV off goes, oh, God, that was awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> you wanted to kill your TV and go for the other experiences where you have at least a good shot of being laying there at the end of the night saying, oh, that was great. I so needed that. I don't think anybody has said that no matter how good your show is when you're turning it off. So, Raj, let's share these uh, three game ideas because I know Zipporah's got some really great tips we're going to share and get to as well. Yeah, so this first game is sharing two adjectives. And what you're doing here is creating a word or two, an, an adjective that would describe um, what would turn your partner on the most, and then embody that. No, no. Actually, in this case, um, honey, well, you could say what's going to turn them on, but it's kind of hard to tell them what they're going to turn in. But what's going to turn uh, you on? So sorry if I threw you off when I said them. I was kind of meaning. You know what's going to turn them on, but yeah. So yourself, you want to you ask your partner what are two words that would really turn you on right now? If I embodied those words, so in this case, it's soft and surrendered. That kind of gives you a flavor of, or a feel, right, of a vibe that you can be creating. Almost, you know, it's not quite role playing; it's more of just a vibe. But it's kind of getting into that vein. You know, you're getting into the demon slut. You know, these are now getting into you know some characters, right? So you could just pick a couple of words. You know, it could be you know bright and silly um, and you're really setting a tone for your beloved to play with whatever the mood is in that you're experimenting with. You know on this note when it comes to experimenting with moods I don't know that I put it this here in the slide deck but one, um, one game we've been uh, talking about lately is creating a playlist of music that is sexy but it might have different vibes to the sexy maybe it's got that demon slut song and it's got the soft and surrendered song and then when you hit shuffle you can be enjoying your lovemaking session and then go ahead and shift your feeling shift your vibe with the song so you're just practicing not getting locked into things being the same and oh this is how we do it and then he's gonna do this and then she's gonna do this and th this is what will end it you wanna be able to mix it up a bit. So whether it be your playlist or your two adjectives, those are two games that you can play. Yeah, and it totally gives you a way to express your sexual desires to your partner and then have them show up that way, uh, which is a safe place to, you know, explore fantasies and things of that nature. Sorry, I didn't mean to trip you up by putting the wrong pronoun I, in there. I, 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 <laughs> He's yeah. like, what did you mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so another one of these games is picking a chakra. So where are you on the chakra line? You may be familiar with the chakra systems, you may not, but these are like energy points along your body that hold a different system, a different energy. So there's your root chakra, that's that kind of animalistic. And then there's all the way up at the top at your crown chakra. That might be almost even a transcendence, you know, creating that kind of dynamic in your love making. And again, this is not necessarily during, this can be, this is the seduction, you're asking these questions and you're using these archetypes to kind of bring you into that space of intimacy. I know, I, I know, see here in the notes I put the throat, you know, the throat chakra, right? That's a big one for me. I love sound and vibration. You can even put your hand on your voice box and feel it. 
And um, I read an article a few months ago about the connection between the muscles in the throat, I don't know about you men, but between the muscles in the throat and the muscles in the vagina. And it was so interesting that they are actually directly connected, so when you are vocalizing, it is actually adding to your pleasure as well. Although that's getting a little bit into Dury, getting a little bit ahead of myself there. <laughs> okay, awesome. So let's move on to picking an archetype. So uh, with picking an archetype, what you're doing is, it's a little bit similar to the adjectives uh, game, but you're picking sort of a persona that, uh, that you could embody that would pull you out of just what you're sort of stuck in. It could be the cleaner king, it could be the rock star, it could be the healer, um, it could be, you know, there's all sorts of different characters, the superhero, but you can think of these types of characters that you can embody, and if you one, you can even refine it down, think of a type of a character, of an archetype, and then actually pick a person that you might be, you know, role-playing with. This one really gets into the role-playing. Raj and I did a really fun exercise a while back where we picked these, each had four, four archetypes, and so we can interchange those archetypes. So what does it look like, in his case, one of his was Jay-Z, and one of mine was uh, Jackie O. So what's it like when he, with Jay-Z and Jackie O get it on? <laughs> I mean, there's some variety for you. That'll spice it up. <laughs> yeah, and you can add costumes, and you can even pick, again, playlists. Uh, these are all fun things that add excitement back into your sex life, and they're fun. Yeah, like you said, costumes. I like to say points for props, points for props. So don't leave out the, out the props. This is all about having fun, right? And then finally, so those are three, actually four possible games, including the little playlist there with the songs to put on shuffle. But I just want to encourage you that when you are playing these games and you are jumping into seduction, um, to do this early and often. So create that sense of anticipation. You might send a text, you know, maybe it's a note on the bathroom mirror, you know, maybe you get up like Raj gets up before I do. So by the time I go in for my morning routine in the bathroom, he's already been there. So you could put a note on the bathroom mirror, and as I like to say, give them something to head home for. Build that anticipation during the day, and then give them something that, that they're going to be looking forward to. So, uh, and I do want to say a thank you to Brian Franklin and Jennifer Russell. They were on our show a couple of seasons ago, and uh, some of these, these games came from, uh, came from that conversation, and we just continue to learn so much from them. We love, we love their work um, in relationship and um, their business coaches as well. So thanks to Brian and Jennifer, good friends of ours as well. So if you're in our listening audience, you could uh, put in what game idea you might have in, uh, in the comment window. And again, you may have to refresh the browser to get comments to update, but we'd love to hear and see what kind of games you play. And Zephora, how about for yourself? Do you have any, any thoughts? We're going to share our action item in a, in a minute, but what are your thoughts on this whole idea of playing a game as, as part of seduction? Do you have any other ideas, or how do you relate with this? One, I want to say I love it because I'm thinking in my own head how like playing games, it brings me into excitement and fun, and it takes me out of a comfortability space. So I'm already thinking, or you got me thinking about what I want to go do when I'm off the call. <laughs> <laughs> I know, let's play a game, and then that game is like fill in the blank, right? And it does, it reminds you of that feeling when you were six or seven and that like, oh, I know, you know, and you're getting someone else excited about it. Especially getting out of the comfort zone, like I, my favorite, I like the archetype of what you just shared. It, it's, it's, I find it, for me, it takes me, it finds aspects of my own persona that maybe have just gotten lazy and just unexpressed, and it's, it kind of like gives it permission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's that's I love that language. It gives it permission because there's so many elements of ourselves that get closed off or shut down, uh, especially in the sexual realm. And it's such a great um, forum to to play with those things and bring them forth. I mean, you could go throughout your day and you know take on being Jay Z, but uh, <laughs> doing it <laughs> sexually, I imagine you know, and we've experienced it just shifts your entire week if you like personify Jay-Z or uh, uh, an archetype that you're uncomfortable with, you're expanding, you're stretching your self-expression and unleash unleashing parts of you that are in you but not expressed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I know, Zephora, you've got some really great tips, so let's just review the action item because, uh, uh, action option, I should say. Uh, because I know that uh, these great ideas are only ideas if it's an aha moment and insight goes, you know, it's gone in a few moments. I mean, when we go from our kitchen to our bedroom, we forgot what we went in there for, right? 
So our brain is designed to forget, let's remember that. So we want to integrate and really engage with this content in a way that makes it meaningful and can even make it a habit over time. So your action option, should you choose to accept it, and as Raj and I like to make it fun by singing the Mission Impossible song. Now this isn't an impossible mission, but it is an option. It is not a given that you're going to take action. So we do like to phrase it that way and really make it clear that you know you are a, you are empowered with this opportunity right now to make a choice to say, oh, that was interesting, or to actually take action right now as we're sharing this. So you can either schedule it in your calendar, write a post-it, send a text to your beloved telling them you want to play a game, whatever it may be, but we're going to give you one possible action you can take here. So we have a few steps here, and so the first step is to pick one of the three games. You know, like Abby said, this could just live as an idea, even a fun idea, an exciting idea. Um, to actually put it to action, you want to pick a game and actually pick a night or some time to actually do do this, do do the game. Play the game, day. and you know, Zipporah, I can see the light bulb going off in your head. Create a new game, right? Um, it's really awesome to see all the different things that have been created out there. In fact, uh, I saw some great stuff on the dating divas as well um, for all sorts of games that they're like things that you can print out and play. It's really fun. Okay, so second uh, step is just to play the game to the fullest. Like it can be awkward, it might be embarrassing, you might you know, think, oh, what are they going to think if I play this archetype? But you're just breaking out of your comfort zone and you're both going to be feeling that way. And so the whole point is just play with it. Just play full out. Don't worry about it. You know, like when you learned to do something as a kid, you didn't think, oh, I'm going to look weird, I'm not going to do that. You know, you were on that skateboard and falling, you were on that bike and falling down and getting back up and getting back up. So bring that playful spirit to this game as well. Yeah, we were actually talking with uh, two of our friends who do a lot of relationship work as well, and uh, the, the woman has a difficult time being sort of the aggressive, nasty um, uh, girl, she just had some hang-ups from, from high school when she experienced some woman that was like that to her. And she totally embraced this being this kind of nasty, hard woman. Oh, oh you mean a nasty in that bad way. Yeah. I thought you meant nasty, like the good nasty. No. <laughs> okay, and, I get and, it now. And she really struggled with it, but her partner was totally turned on by it. Yeah, being mean. It was being, being, being mean. mean. When you say nasty, you mean yeah. mean nasty. It's kind of being yeah. bitchy, yeah. mean, like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. So, step three. You may want to use the romp recap. That's one of our tips. We highly recommend you go check out the blog. You know, that's for looking at after you've had um, some sexy time. To There's a three criteria scoring card to really look at how your sex, how that experience was so that you're always even better ifing it and you're making talking about it as casual and normal as like what we think of that movie last night or what we think of that restaurant. And so um, you can go ahead and search on the blog if you'd like for more on that Rob recap. But this is essentially just having a conversation about how it went and how it might be better next time, other archetypes that you might like to try, any refinements of the archetypes. You know, you kind of held this archetype like this, but if you held it like this next time, that would be really hot. So you can dive in and uh, check out the romp recap so that you're, you're really talking about how that went and how it could be even better. So the last step here is do it again and again and again and apply what you learned each time to up-level. Uh, None of these things go perfectly the first time when you're stretching yourselves into new areas of self-expression. I mean, it can, but um, just have an expectation of, like, this is something that we're going to be playing with and we're going to keep uh, trying different things, new things, and um, learn from what happened in the previous session. And in that, it makes your sex life become this even bigger game of how can you continually up-level playing the smaller games to really creating this excitement and uh, desire around your sex life. Yeah, because so often a seduction is really seen as, oh my gosh, one more chore for I've got to do. Okay, I've got to, you know, woo this person over or, you know, they're going to woo me over. But it's, it's, you know, especially over time, it can be seen as, you know, a chore, a task. And this really brings a sense of play and excitement um, so you're not even just getting excited about the sex, you're getting excited about the on-ramp to it as well. So um, Zipporah, I know um, you have so many awesome uh, tips. I love the, the first one here. We've got many to dive into, but just that there's an exclamation mark right after foreplay. 
I love that. So we turn this over to you now. And uh, what would you like to share with us today for how to keep the sex dirty as it starts? Yeah. You know, the one thing that stands out for me is the foreplay because I believe that why make it so difficult once we're in the bedroom? Isn't every moment a good time for foreplay? And, and you know, how can we create that? Well, I know for me and my partner, it's like every moment from the way that we're passing by each other during breakfast or the way that we're skimming across each other's um, skin or just a gentle butt grab or um, we're hiking the other night and no one was around. We're hiking down this trail and all of a sudden out of nowhere, my partner just grabs me, grabs my butt and starts kissing me passionately and then a minute later we start hiking again and, and that to me, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's exciting. And so that keeps the juice alive. So once I'm in the bedroom, like every moment is like bedroom. And so once we're in there, we're just turned on and excited and there's a lot of ease to that. I love that. Raj and I have called that a mastering mini seduction so that you know you're you keep that sexiness alive. And then a few seasons ago we had Adam Galad and his uh, wife Sandy Pants. I don't even know Sandy's real last name. Well actually she's going by Galad now. But that we call her Sandy Pants because she's so sassy. Um, uh, but they, they call it 24 hour foreplay. That it's that's always happening. Every minute that you're together, you're either turning each other off or turning each other on. There is no neutral. It, it, essential because I find what happens sometimes to couples is I love all these games you're talking about because right what happens we get into the bedroom and then it's hard work or we feel so disconnected because we're so stressed by work in our day. But if it's 24-7 foreplay, we don't necessarily get to that place. Yes. I like to say a little ass grab goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> or in my case, a little neck kiss. That's the one that gets me. <laughs> so, Great. So should we uh, move on to practicing autonomy? Yes. And so... I always say whether you're dating someone or you're married and you're living together, the autonomy is the juiciest time. And there's different things that you can practice in that. It's like doing what you love to do. You know, the other night I was so excited about my new book cover. I didn't even have sex on my mind. And I was just, I got it in the mail and I couldn't stop talking about it or looking at it. My partner and I get ready to meditate. He just, again, he just, he, just got high off of my excitement and that was such a turn on for him but that was my autonomy I was so alive and what keeps me passionate so the invitation to people is stay doing what you love to do don't give up what juices you up to always be with your partner because sometimes we forget that um, along oh, with that's that so great. yes go ahead oh, I was just to say you know with uh, uh, Dan Pink wrote this book forget the title, but he talked about the three key elements of motivation are autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And so people, they, they are, they're motivated when something comes from them. But I love how you're expanding this to even, you know, it's just that excitement of being alive. Like, I love to garden. So when I garden and I come in, I'm in this softer place and ready to be with Raj in a different way than if I had just been working and wasn't doing the things that I love doing so like this idea of to, to have a, be, a, a more sexy seduction to do what you love to do um, that's just really great yeah it's, you could even make a game where you each do an autonomous thing and then come back into each other's presence yeah, yeah listen, we could listen. garden I could go on my bike yeah <laughs> then we'll come back yes right so maybe hey, by the way, do you have your book cover do you have your book cover right there I don't have it right here you don't have it right there. Okay, I was going to say, show it off. We're excited for you, too. That excitement's contagious. <laughs> Thank you. So, yes, please, everyone, do what you love to do and come to the bedroom with a full tank because that's exciting and arousing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we often don't do that. We uh, like. Let's just talk about the flip side of that for a second um, because we kind of give up that, I mean, I just wanted to explore that a little bit, why we give up our autonomy, because we often do it. Um, we either think that we can't do something without upsetting our partner, or that, I, I don't know, there's this weird dynamic we get sucked into sometimes when we're in a, in a marriage, and we don't make time in a healthy way 
to to be a part. Uh, do you have anything to say for couples in that realm of how to really embrace autonomy? Yeah, first I just want to share with people that and the couples that it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your relationship. Often, I know for me, it's the enthusiasm to be with my partner is so big that I just forget, right? And it becomes all about them. Right. So there's nothing wrong with the relationship. Um, so just know that by you choosing autonomy and doing going out to the dance class or going out for a hike, doing the gardening, that you are actually fueling your relationship. So if you're all about wanting to give to the relationship, look at it like that. Like you're actually, this is fuel for you, for your partner. That's great. That's great. So um, from autonomy to solo nights and sleeping alone, we've got, we've got some solo time. Tell us about that. I'm big on solo time. So again, solo time is part of the autonomy. And so if you're sleeping together every night, I think it's a fact sometimes we don't sleep well often in a shared bed. And again, it creates this, this habit like you're always together. We'll create an element of surprise. Plan a night. Plan it. Literally sit aside say, tonight I'm going to go on a solo date. Go into your own bed. Create a ritual of time with yourself, a ceremony, even self-pleasuring. Light a candle. Read a book self-pleasure and plan that the next morning maybe you sneak into your beloved's bed or they come to sneak into your bed. Make it fun. I love that. That's great. Not everyone has their bed in their beloved's bed, um, same place, but my uh, my father for a while he did and they had different phone lines, different, um, they didn't have different entrances to the house, but it really, really worked for them and they'd start sleeping in one bed and then someone would crawl out in the middle of the night and go back to their bed and um, it just at first I, I my head was a little cocked, like what, and then it just realized how great, how much fun that was for them. It wasn't a given that they were going to sleep together every night, and it made it more exciting when they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. myself, I'm a little bit just to, as Raj was before arguing the other point. Um, uh, we are we we joke that we be a, a gold medal cuddlers. Like we love sleeping together, <laughs> even if it's really hot. You know, we'll do like the little toe cuddle. You know? um, so I would I I it would be but it would be fun. But I'd be challenged to to sleep apart from my Raj. <laughs> <laughs> I'll challenge you on that. <laughs> I will. Hey, this is all about playing a game and experimenting and doing something new, right? And there was one thing that I, I don't remember if I read it in your bio, if when we spoke you said it and it just it blew me away. It was so great. You said something like, I think it was on your website, you said, no matter, no matter where you are sexually right now, I promise you you're only scratching the surface. And yeah. I loved that of like this whole world and frontier of what's out there in our sexuality that no matter where we are, there's there's so much more. Yeah, I love that as well. Um, just to let our viewers know, the Google Hangout link is live. So if you refresh your browser and click on that button that says join the Hangout, you can join us live in the in the session. Yes, and, and joining us live, you'll also um, become eligible for one of Z Zipporah's sessions. Mm -hmm. um, that's an individual session, very generous of her. And also, we're going to give you our cheat sheet of our best tips, summarized in one sentence, two pages, one for fights clean and one for sex dirty. <clears throat> so you can, if you don't want to be on video, that's totally fine. You can leave your video off and ask your question on audio. You can also put your question in the comments. Um, but we're happy to answer those personal questions while we continue to go through these awesome tips from Zephora. Okay, so paying attention to your imagination, that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like follow your bliss there. <laughs> yeah, follow your bliss. And, you know, the sexual fantasies, your imagination, they can only go as far as you're willing to share them. And my invitation is to start talking about, and you guys see done this with the games as well, is start talking about your fantasies. Create a night, make a game of it. What, I, what comes to me is really even cutting, like writing them on paper, cutting up maybe three to four of your top fantasies. Do it in your own space if you tend to be more on the shy, shy side, and put them in a hat. And have both of you do it, and then come into your date actually picking from the hat. And I would dedicate the whole night to exploring that fantasy because you can now set the stage. So what I mean by that, set and setting your environment, 
what do you need for that date? Do you need the props? Do you need costumes? Do you need, um, you know, candles and incense? And create the space, but share it because it's such a turn on. Just your partner gets so turned on, and I know I get turned on when when I get told what my partner loves. And the quirkier it is for me, the better. Tell me the weirdest thing, and it's so exciting and arousing. Oh, that's great. I love the, the game you're playing with putting it, you know, writing it down and putting it in a hat. I think I read once about someone had put them inside balloons and the different color balloon told them what kind of event it is, like if it's a stay-at-home date or if it's a going out or if it's an out one, one that's outdoors. I thought it was not fun. So people are just getting creative. Right, creativity is sexy and it stimulates that sexual energy. So work it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Love these. Okay, so then we have explore intentional touch and gaze. Oh, and gaze. It's just such a beautiful word itself. Just, you know, those words that when you say it, they sound beautiful. Mm. And this is that piece. I tapped on it a little bit earlier with the foreplay, but it is really coming. This is like a, different from the games, but really just get present with your partner wherever you're at, even if it's one minute of gently touching their skin rubbing across their cheek, um, gently caressing their breast or their, or their bottom as you're passing them, and just offer them presence. I know when, when I have the, the, the eyes just right on me, you know, at first you might feel nervous, but also you often don't know about you two, but there's like a flutter in the heart, and, and the body gets hot, and you don't really know what's next, and it also gives permission for us to even go into, or for you to go into the, the tips we already went through and exploring more of your fantasies, but just get present and let that touch happen throughout the day. And, and there's that word permission again, which I think it's so right because so, I mean, just from before we can even remember, we're told, you know, sex is wrong and shameful. And so when your beloved is giving you permission, invitation, request, it makes a huge, huge difference for people to express themselves. So, um, for all of these, all of those of you listening out there, or watching tonight, you know, give permission to your beloved. Tell them what you want. So it's, I just, and I have to say, you say that word beautifully too. It's another one of those words, permission. You know, it's very sexy. Yeah, and and and, and another note to the listeners is, you know. Have that eye gaze be so present because by your presence, they're going to feel so much confident and safer in getting sexy and sharing those fantasies, um, which comes into the next of creating your sex scene and the games in the bedroom. So sex scenes often are, again, or they're overlooked or it's assumed that it's just going to take place in the bedroom. Well, I'm one of those people that's like, plan it beforehand if you're going into a really extreme sex scene. So everything feels safe and ready and comfortable so you can blossom and be fully open in it. Yes, that's why when we talked about that article, uh, uh, sex is like, uh, how sex is like tripping, <laughs> uh, because as they, as they say, set and setting is everything. So yeah, holding the container and having someone feel that they're in a safe space. You can't surrender unless you're feeling safe. So, so with this tip, do you mean um, uh, proactively set up the scene for the sexual encounter? So that... two things, yes, and also, you know, um, emotionally. Um, also, mm -hmm. it, depending on the scene, some people might have some, some really juicy hot scenes and depending, they might need, I'm going to go as far as saying safe words or, or code words while they're playing, depending on the type of scene that they're creating. So they want to be really logistical, emotionally, communicative, and also with the environment. And remember, points for props. <laughs> yeah, lots of props. <laughs> Great, awesome. Which uh, the props kind of brings us into this next one here with uh, your top three fantasies and turn-ons. I love this game. Oh, create the date. Okay, and talk about your top fantasies. And so. Yeah, again, expressing. I keep thinking about the voice and expressing, and you mentioned this, just using the voice. And so set the stage. Again, usually when we set the stage, I know for me, it, again, I'm going to use the word permission again. It feels safer. So go into it and fully just, one of you I'm going to invite just to listen 
So sit there and not give feedback, but just the, uh, let the other person be on the stage and let them start to express their fantasy and possibly, I'm going to say stand up while you're expressing it and use body language. Mm. I love this, uh, this tip and the impact that it has. Uh, we've done some uh, workshops, uh, you know, sex workshops and things of that nature, and you get this freedom to express yourself in a way that you'll find initially you're totally shut down and it's hard to even utter a word of a sexual fantasy, but after like a half an hour, even five, ten minutes of doing it, all of a sudden they're pouring out of you and you just feel like alive and you feel totally sexy and people are attracted to you in a new way and um, there's just so much benefit to creating the state and then holding space in a way, right, for someone to feel safe and to express these things. Uh, like Gabby mentioned earlier, we're so um, trained to not do these things <laughs> societally that uh, there's resistance, fear, and it totally shuts down a big part of who you are. Uh, and it's amazing how sexually attractive you become when you start allowing that energy to flow. So I love this one. And, and the thing I'll add to this one is please let your sex be light as well. We take it so seriously. I know when I'm in the bedroom expressing fantasies or, or role-playing or playing, I, I'm laughing, I'm playing. So, you know, if you're the one who's going to express your fantasy and you feel nervous, give yourself permission to laugh and, again, be quirky. Um, it, it's, it's actually very sexy and arousing. Be quirky. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's interesting how we associate sexiness with being serious. It's going to be significant. Like, yeah. And, <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so our next uh, tip here is sexting, sexting erotic emails. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's all part of those, those mini seductions and keeping that alive in the day, right? Absolutely. And... This can be the most challenging thing, but if you're away from your partner, I do it when I'm on trips for, for a month at a time in a way. You're away, you know, find either an erotic poem. You can, it can be like three words. You know, you're sexting. I had a client once who, who sexted to his partner, and she was at a, um, a meeting. She was like leading a group of people, and she got it in the midst of that. And she, it just lit up her meeting. No one else knew what she received, but she was so excited. And she's like, and he felt so masculine and so strong and present. And of course, that ignited their in the bedroom time. Yeah, that's uh, Roger. Like one of my favorite times to have sexy time is actually just before going out. Like if you're going to dinner or party or something of that nature, and there's like you just have like little secret, and you're all you know you're connected, and so you know you can go up to a party and just have this really vibrant, joyful uh, energy. It's one, it's one of my favorite times. Yes. What, what we call it the, the pre-party poke. <laughs> <laughs> I like my alliterations. <laughs> we're all juiced up and everyone wants some of that. Everyone's like, oh my god, they're so exciting and they're, they're, they're vibrant, <laughs> they're radiating. Totally. Let's yeah. get that trending, right? Pre-party poke, you know? Treat it as a community service. Right? Don't leave home without doing it. <laughs> okay, any moment is a perfect moment for some surprise foreplay. I like that. So, so this is really a recap on everything, and, and what I'm wanting to say is, remember, you don't have to save it for the bedroom. When you do, sometimes that's when things get difficult, and... Um, habitual. So every moment foreplay, the sexting is foreplay, the, the touching as you're passing by each other during breakfast or in the kitchen or you're going on a hike, you surprise each other, grab each other's butt, give each other a passionate kiss. Foreplay in every moment is what keeps that energy high. Yeah, it's, it's amazing the, um, the uh, it's sort of like kindling the sexual energy and uh, we can so forget about it and let that fire just totally cool. And um, it's it's so important once you start experiencing more regular sort of sexual express and expression and stretching your boundaries, just the impact it has on your entire life. Uh, we <coughs> we often think that not having sex doesn't you know it doesn't matter. It's like not that big a deal. 
And uh, on one hand, you, that may be true, but if you've experienced the flip side, you can totally see how it enlivens you and you show up differently for people. People want to interact with you and it just it brings this sense of aliveness. Uh, and, and that's not to say that it's always easy. You know, Gabby and I have to totally put in structures to make sure that at the end of a long work day, we don't just default to watching the screens uh, and that we actually do the things that, that we teach. Yeah, transitioning, getting into nature, you know, we've just uh, been talking about it doesn't matter how busy we are, you know, it's so important to just go outside and breathe in the fresh air and it just shifts us out of that functional, as I was talking about before, and into that fun. You know, even going for a walk can be a beautiful seduction because sometimes people just need to get connected. Um, and it's great, you know, we don't have kids, but for a lot of people that do have kids, get outside, go for a walk. You know, let them run around, and then the two of you, you know, hopefully can have a an opportunity to quite literally take a breath of fresh air. <laughs> uh, it can make a huge difference. Awesome, and we see. Uh, I, I'm in this interesting phase in life where I can't read with my glasses or without my glasses. It's Ke Keo. Keo, welcome Keo. So yeah, Keo, um, please do um either um. You can either enter your email or, um, Sarah, as the moderator, would you put in our email? So in case Keo doesn't want to put their email in the notes, they can email us and we'll make sure to get him or her, I'm not sure about Keo, uh, that free gift. Um, so Keo, if you have a question, you can go ahead and chat. It looks like your video was just turned off there, so not sure if you clicked that Hangout on purpose or not. Um, but in the meantime... Feel free to come back, and anyone else, if you want to ask uh, your question live, if you don't want to be on video, feel free to ask it in the chat, too. Um, but we, we know this is a personal topic, but we're all in the same boat going through the same things, uh, and we really can learn from each other. It's so wonderful when we do our six-week course, and we have all of the couples. You know, we do it on Zoom, so you can see each other on video, and um, they chat with each other while we're doing the course. It's just really great to see that camaraderie and support. So, uh, Zipporah, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we've got her up here on the screen. For those of you who want to find out more, you know, Zipporah has, uh, what's the title of your new book that's coming out soon, Zipporah? Revolutionizing Intimacy. Revolutionizing Intimacy, yes. And uh, Soulful uh, Relating Institute um, is her institute, but you can find out more on ZipporahIntimacy.com. And uh, Zipporah, um, anything else you want to let uh, people know about, about the work that you're doing or anything upcoming uh, to, that you'd like to share? Um, I would just love to share with them. I'd love to invite people if they feel called to come on by the website. I'd love to have them be a part of our global launch for Revolutionizing Intimacy, which is turning into a global campaign to build a community all around the world to shift the way we relate. Absolutely. Wonderful. Great. So everyone can do that. And then if you'd like to um, find out more about Relationship Fun and Games, we also have a free gift for you. This is our Relationship Reset Quick Start Kit. Um, and that includes a little mini course. We send you an email series with some of our top uh, tips uh, um, from the hot and bothered backseat driver, which will keep you from ever having to fight over directions or just over driving in the car again. That's been a huge lifesaver. Um, even to mastering mini seductions, which we talked a little bit about tonight. Uh, we'll also give them a copy, uh, give you a copy of the book. Book. You've got a little echo there. Echo there. Sephora, maybe your mic, maybe your mic, maybe we're getting. There we go. Okay. Um, and um, also access to Feist Clean Sex Dirty Show and the replays as well. Um, now, sometimes we need a little bit more um, direct uh, support. Oh, I see Raj is telling me we want to first tell you about next week. Fights clean during. What's happening? So we'll have our special guests, Candace and Adam, and we're going to be discussing fights clean during. So fights clean during is all about when you're in the heat of an argument, and often that can ruin an entire evening, a weekend, vacation, family time, and it's hard to know how to pull out of those things. We get totally triggered and uh, our survival strategies are totally at play and we have some great tips, some great lifelines on how you can turn an argument that can waste all of this time, energy and effort that we really don't have um, and allow you to pull out of it and learn from that fight, not just 
sweep it under the rug, but be able to pull out of it and learn from it as well. Yeah, we don't want you just to move forward from an argument. We do want you to end it, but we want you to be able to take that very thing that's pulling you apart and actually have it bring you together. So this isn't just on how to you know, eliminate fighting. That's not what we're talking about because actually research has shown that the fighting is important. It's how to fight really well and how to, when it does start getting, um, you know, when you're, you're kind of lower brain, your fight or flight starts to take over, how you can calm that part of yourself and how you can as I like to say, unhook from even in the heat of it. So join uh, Candace and Adam and uh, Raj and I next week as we dive in how to keep the fights clean during, right in during the heat of it. Great. And we told you about our free gift uh, offering here, and this URL will be in the uh, comments window. And again, refresh your browser window if some of these uh, things aren't showing if up. If the comments aren't showing up, yes. Okay, we also have our ebook, and this ebook is beautifully put together, and it's called How to Keep the Fights Clean and the Sex Dirty Five Simple Steps to Solutions That Really Satisfy. Yeah, and it's laid out again in a way such that you don't have to read all of the pages of the book. I highly recommend it. There's some great stuff in there. But again, we want you to be able to scan it really easily and find what's most interesting for you, what's going on in your relationship right now. Or if you're one of those couples, uh, one of those people that are single and seeking the one, bravo for you for being proactive. We want you to be able to find the tips um, that you want to practice and learn the most uh, as well. So you can check that out. And um, we're just so happy to have you on the show. Uh, we, we love love is what yeah, I like to say like all, to the say all the time. And it's, yeah, really, it's challenging. really challenging. You want to unmute that for a second? Thanks. Um, and so it can, you know, I like to say that life is too tough to do alone, yet a crappy relationship is worse than none at all but still wonderful is so worth it. So it can take something in a relationship to be awesome. Um, it doesn't just happen on its own. It's not going to just bite you in the butt. But if you spread that effort out a little bit over time, it takes it out of the work category and brings it into the fun. And so this ebook and or our free relationship reset or Zipporah's um, session, you know, snap up these free opportunities right now. Uh, so that you can take those steps towards you having the most playful, peaceful, and passionate relationship possible. Thanks for joining us tonight. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, Zipporah, any closing words for the audience tonight? Um, I just want to thank everyone for joining and stepping up to the plate to keep things fun and connected and rich in their relationships. It was awesome to be here with you guys. Yeah, thanks so much, yeah, thanks for, joining so much for joining us. Today. Great, she's muted. It's so great to, to dive deeper into your work, Zipporah, right. and uh, yeah. any of the, the audiences, the audiences like, us, like us, we look forward to the evening of these days that we run the show because we learn all these hot, sexy things that we want to go try out. Yeah, there's a good seduction. Watch <laughs> watch <laughs> Fights Clean Sex Duty TV. That'll get you turned on. It yeah. certainly does me. Totally. Thanks again so much, Zipporah, for, for joining us and for all of those who are watching either live or on the replay. Or on the replay.